This calories in, calories out model doesn't work at all. If you're trying to lose weight, what you need to do is Dr. Jason Fung, the founder of intermittent fasting, whose influential work could be the key to a healthier and even longer life. Every continent is seeing this increase in obesity, but we put the blame on the individual. The problem is there's something wrong with the message we're giving people. And I can go over a few examples. First of all, exercise is really good in a number of ways, but in terms of of weight loss, it's actually a very, very small effect. The whole idea that you need to eat as soon as you get up is just false. We know from twin studies that 70% of your risk of becoming obese is due to genetics, but it doesn't explain why the population became much more obese. And we know that you can't cure obesity by saying eat fewer calories. It's about fixing the hormones that are behind the calories. If you want to lose body fat, you actually need to extend the period of time that you're not eating so you do some intermittent fasting. There's all this data showing that fasting activates the body. It increases your energy and your concentration. This book here, The Obesity Code, Unlocking the Secrets of Weight Loss. Why did you write this book? What was the sort of driving motivation behind committing what must have been a very long part of your life to this subject matter? Uh, it's, it was actually a very interesting sort of journey of discovery for me. So I did my training in nephrology, which is kidney disease. So I'm a kidney disease specialist. And I thought about weight loss sort of very conventionally, sort of calories in, calories out, just watch what you eat sort of thing. And that's what's taught to all doctors is that it's extremely unhelpful for people. It doesn't work at all. It doesn't work for patients and it doesn't work for, for, for doctors even, right? So doctors who want to lose weight, they don't, they don't use calories in, calories out because it doesn't really work. And we all know this. Um, every person has sort of counted their calories and almost all of them fail to succeed. So the whole point was how to get people to lose weight. And so I started to look into the literature and I started to read about it and so on. I got very, very interested in it. And again, I, I started to become very unhappy with the discussion about calories in, calories out, because the whole point was that people had this idea that it was energy balance, right? And there's this sort of energy balance equation, which is uh, calories in minus calories out equals body fat, right? Because body fat is a way to store calories. But that's not a very helpful sort of description of how to approach the problem, right? The problem is not that people didn't realize that they had to eat fewer calories or increase their calorie expenditure. The problem was why were they eating more calories than they could expend, right? And it's because the body is, is being told to store energy, right? That's the way it is. That's why you're taking in more calories or you're, you're storing more calories is because your body has hormones that tell you to store calories. So there's a hormone called insulin, for example. And if you give people insulin, so inject them with insulin, which is a drug for type 2 diabetes, almost everybody gains weight. So if you give somebody insulin, they gain weight. If I gave you insulin, you would gain weight. It has nothing to do with the, you know, your willpower, for example. If I gave you insulin, you would gain weight. Why? Because I'm giving your body the instructions to store energy. So you're saying that weight gain and obesity in particular isn't a function of calories in, calories out. It is a function of hormones. It's a function of hormones. And it's sort of, you have to think about it in sort of levels, right? So calories in, calories out is true. So body fat is a storage, is, it's a way to store energy, which is calories, equals calories in, calories out. But that's not the real question. The question is, why are you storing more calories than you're expending? And it's because you're telling your body to do so. So for example, if, if you take another equal, uh, I'll give you an analogy say alcoholism is alcohol in minus alcohol out, right? Same, same idea. Or if you have a room, it's the number of people, how, how full it is, is how many people enter the room or exit the room, right? So same, same idea, right? It's absolutely true. So alcohol in minus alcohol out. Equals how drunk you are. Equals how drunk you are. So right. alcoholism. So can you simply cure alcoholism by tel telling an alcoholic, oh, just drink less alcohol than you expend. It's like, 
Yes, you can say that, and it's absolutely true, but it's not useful in any way because you've never gotten to the really the deeper understanding of why that person is taking in more alcohol, right? You have to get to that next level and say, well, you know, it's like going one level deeper. Why? Why are they drinking more alcohol? Well, maybe they're depressed. Maybe they're addicted. Deal with the addiction. That is the way to deal with alcoholism. You can't cure it just by saying, drink less alcohol. The same way you can't cure the obesity is by saying, eat fewer calories. Because you're not understanding why the body is, is storing more energy. With the amount of information we now have, the amount of science we have, one would expect that obesity levels would be coming down. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you think about the way most people think about it, it's mostly still in calories. Even in the academic centers, they all think about sort of calories, how to get calories down, how to reduce calories. And I always, and I always say, well, it's not about the calories, right? It's about fixing the hormones that are behind the calories. Because like, you can choose to eat fewer calories. Yes, that's true. But you can't, but you have to ask yourself, why are people eating um, so many calories, right? Well, it's because they're hungry. You can't choose to be less hungry. And therefore you have to really talk about controlling the hunger and controlling the hormones, which are behind the calories that you eat. And that's gonna be much more successful to you. If you take two different foods, equal number of calories, and you eat them, the hormonal response to those calories are completely different. So you eat two slices of white bread and jam. All that energy, so insulin spikes up because it's very high in refined carbohydrates. All that energy goes straight into your body fat and you've left none of it for, for, for energy for your day. By 10.30, now you're ravenous and you go get yourself a low-fat muffin. Again, pure carbs, insulin spikes up, all of that goes straight into your, your fat stores. Why? Because you told it to. Remember that when you eat white bread or muffins or refined carbohydrates, you're going to have this insulin spike, which is going to tell your body to store energy. If you eat an egg, you don't get that spike in insulin. So that, that energy that you've taken, those calories are there. You can use it. And so what happens? Well, that keeps you full during the day. If you're telling your body to immediately store those calories as body fat, well, guess what? Over time, you're going to gain body fat because you told your body to do that. If you eat the egg and insulin's not spiking up, well, you haven't told your body to store that energy, so it's going to be around for you to use all day long. And you won't be hungry. And you're not going to be hungry because your body's like, why do I need to eat again? Because, you know, you you, you basically have taken the energy that you need. I've got it available, right? It's sort of like if you go to the, the, the grocery store, right? You can store food in the refrigerator. Suppose you go to the grocery store, put all your food away, lock it away in the, in the refrigerator. Now you have nothing to eat right? You're going to say, oh, I need to go out and get some more food, right? Same thing with your body, right? So if you take food, but you've also spiked up your insulin, you're going to lock away all those that energy immediately into, into your fat stores. It's not going to be available for you to use. Well, you're going to say, I'm going to go out and get more. So you haven't controlled the hunger that's going to lead to the caloric intake, which is going to lead to the weight gain. People look at this through a, an evolutionary lens and say, you know, we just didn't have this much food. So it's the abundance and um, ease of access to food. It's the fridges that we now have. It's the, you know, we never had fridges in our home. So people point at it and go, well, that's why people are getting gaining weight. And, you know, we're suffering with obesity at epidemic levels, which is because there's more supply. And yeah. the brain is taking advantage of it. Because once upon a time, if we didn't eat that jam and toast, then we would have, you know, maybe not have been able to find food for another two weeks or something. Yeah, I don't think that's the whole story. Because if you think about it, uh, and people, again, um, make that assumption that we don't have any control over uh, our body fatness, right? So they say, well, it's available, so you're going to take it, right? In fact, that's not true because we actually have a number of different uh, hormones that tell us to stop eating, okay? So if you eat, you cannot simply keep eating and eating and eating, right? If you go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, at some point, you have to stop because mm -hmm. you're full, right? So there are systems, very powerful systems within our body that tell us to stop eating. So you eat food. 
there are uh, stomach stretch receptors, for example. So as your stomach stretches out, it sends a signal to your brain and says, stop eating. If you eat a lot of protein, uh, it activates a hormone called peptide YY, which tells you to stop eating. If you eat a lot of dietary fat, you activate a hormone called cholecystokinin, which again, tells you to stop eating. And these are very powerful. If you look in the wild, there are no obese antelope. There are no obese lions. Why? Because how much body fat you're, you carry is actually very important. If you are obese as an antelope, you're gonna get eaten. If you're an obese lion, you're not gonna catch any food. So therefore it's gonna correct itself. So if I overeat now, my body will basically overcompensate by burning off the extra calories. To it, it, absolutely. So if you eat a huge meal, right? You eat, you know, you go to a big wedding or something like that, you mm -hmm. eat a huge meal. The next day you're probably not that hungry. If you eat a giant steak, so you're activating all these satiety hormones, peptide YY, cholecystokinin, you're eating all this food. Well, you may not be hungry for the next day. So that means that my body has some kind of baseline weight. Yeah, it will know whether you should eat more or less. So there's a this concept called the sort of uh, body set weight, which is a sort of thermometer. That is your body sets a weight that you should be at. And if you go above that weight, or if you eat too much, it will activate hormonal systems to bring it back down. If you don't eat enough, it will also activate hormonal systems to bring it up. So it's like a thermostat that you set, you have in your room. For example, you set the, the room temperature. If it's too hot, your, the, the, the room activates the air conditioning. If it's too cold, it activates the heat. Your body actually acts the same way. If you gain too much body fat, your fat cells, for example, will produce leptin, which is another hormone. The leptin tells your body to stop eating. That's really interesting. So in the case of obese people, their set yes. point must just be really high. Yes, and that's the crux of the matter. Why is that set point being overridden? Just like if you have a room that's too hot and you look and you say the thermometer is set for room temperature, why is it so hot in here? Then you can say, okay, well, what's the problem? And the problem is not you know heat in versus heat out, right? That's, that's a very simplistic way. Same thing, if your body has too much body fat, you got to then, Think about why are you overcoming the normal compensatory mechanisms that are happening, that are stopping you from eating? A lot of it relates to processing of foods, of course. So if you take out, so remember I talked about stretch receptors in the stomach, right? So you eat natural, natural foods, there's a natural break. It stretches the stomach, you stop eating. Well, what's one way? Pull out all the fiber process the foods, turn it into, say, a very fine dust. That means it's absorbed extremely quickly into the bloodstream. So that means that pure, you've got pure carbohydrate basically mainlining it into your IV, like, like an IV. Your glucose spikes way up, your insulin spikes way up. It's completely unnatural, right? If you eat pure carbohydrate instead of eating it with you know, proteins and fats, it's going to go, it's going to shoot way high. That's unnatural. And that's going to overcome the natural the tendencies to, for you to stop eating. So, you know, you've, you've basically overcome that, 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 that protective mechanism because you've ultra processed the, the carbohydrates. If you don't eat any protein, if you don't eat any fat, you're not activating peptide YY, which is the satiety hormone. You're not activating cholecystokinin. All of a sudden you're eating you know, 500 calories of white bread, but you have zero satiety. Or if you drink a Coca-Cola or a soda, for example, I've always, you know, thought about this. It's like, how can you take a thousand calories, for example, in one of those giant sodas you get at the ball game or something and don't feel full at all? Whereas if you took a steak, that's a thousand calories, you'd be like, I'm pretty full. I don't really feel like eating. You drink the soda, you're like, I really feel like eating some chips or popcorn or something. Why? Because it has zero satiety. 